Hey everyone, Robles Jr. here. Thank you so much for watching. And today we're gonna take a look at the latest update to Diatlas X64. And that is the N64 emulator for the PS Vita. We have version 0.3. How exciting. Another update in a matter of weeks. That is so awesome. So uh, before we begin, I want to apologize for the lack of content and for not you know giving you guys uh, all sorts of different videos throughout the week I've just been struggling with uh, my internet connection so they really screwed that up they screwed up my order the connections here at the new place was all screwed up so it's just been a whole big mess in the last two weeks and it's just been terrible uh, trying to get content done trying to record and moving in it was just Oh, I'm just glad I'm past that. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to take a look at the latest update and I will provide timestamps down in the description down below and also in the comment section. That way, if you want to skip to like the testing of the games or everything new that has changed with the app, you can go and skip all this because in the beginning of this video, I will go through every single note for version 0.3. And after that, if you are new to the N64 emulator, I will show you how to install. It's fairly simple. And then after that, we're going to take a look at all the different features, uh, looking at the app, seeing if anything has changed, like the UI or any box arts. And then after that, we'll test the five games that I have, which is Killer Instinct Gold, uh, Pokemon Stadium, Banjo-Kazooie, uh, let's see, Smash Bros, and Ocarina of Time. So I'm very excited and see if there's any changes to those games. Okay, so I will transition to the desktop here and take a look at the notes. Released last Friday, May 15, 2020 at 3.45 p.m. And here is the change log. Thank you, Rene Ganamante, and everyone who has been working on this. Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. And let's just begin. So the change log we have, wow, that's a lot. So added the possibility to change UI theme, nice. Added in hash check car guard card guard on textures updates huge speed up when textures caching is disabled okay textures caching is now disabled by default okay added a rom info window in rom selector showing several info related to the currently hovered rom very good added box art showing in rom selector integrated online compatibility list inside the emulator itself you'll now know how a rom actually works on the emulator from the rom selector itself Interesting. Fix the bug causing some textures, textures, textures to not be rendered during 3D geom geometries rendering. I'm having a hard time reading this, guys. Sorry. Updated live area assets. Thanks, that one Siong and the Iron Universe. Optimized some dynamic operations and implemented some missing ones. Thanks to Master Fies and the flow. Uh, added a hack, added and hack to make, it should be added a hack, added an hack to make Raymond to properly display in game texts. Remove frame skip option. Let's see, implemented CPU rendering support at ROM boot. Fixes some games apparently freezing at boot. For example, Rayman 2, EG, I don't know what EG is. Uh, let's see, properly resetting rdp frame counter at rom boot fix several issues with textures sizes calculations fixes a lot of glitches in several games added an initial implementation of mu6 version 1 audio micro code added an initial implementation of resident evil 2 custom gfx micro codes Next up, added a new voice in the debugger showing the currently installed audio microcode. So there is just a lot of going on here. Fix some of the out of bounds accesses that could have led to undesired behaviors. Hmm. Increased new lib heap size to 160 megabytes per second. I think that's 100 megabytes. 160 megabytes. This is an issue preventing to launch 46 megabytes ROMs after launching first another ROM. Added <clears throat> MIP maps option that will make the emulator use MIP maps for 3D geometries. 
Fix an issue causing viewport to be incorrectly calculated. Fixes scaling issues in several games. Pokemon Stadium 2. Let's see. Added proper viewpoint viewport scaling for PAL ROMs. Added negative viewport support. Added controls remapping support. Let's see. Fixes render issues in some games. Fighting Force 64. Uses presets files similar to the PSP builds. Improved GFX, GFX, GFX microcodes detection code. Let's see, improved DMA code. Fix an issue that caused 2D rendering to be done with incorrect textures. Fix an issue with depth. Depth. Fix an issue with depth buffer usage that was causing some undesired clipping to happen. Fixes some clipping issues. Invisible in link in interiors on the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Ooh. Added cheat supports. Improved boot up code. Added assert logging implementation. Added brightness option that allows to alter game brightness. Very good. Added experimental 16 by 9 unstretched aspect ratio. Unbinded Pokemon Stadium and Pocket Monster Stadium titles for proper compatibility list support. All right, so let's move on to actually installing this game. And I'll have two links in the description down below for you. The first one is the actual uh, the GitHub link. Here's the VPK. Earlier this morning, I was unable to go to VitaDB. It was crashing and i just had a blank screen and homebrew browser on the ps vita wasn't working either but it looks like it's working now which is great so this is the second link and you just hit the download vpk and on here you can click on this link it's a hundred it's 1.78 megabytes i was going to say 100 uh, just click on download vpk all right let's just download both here show you it's the same file, so you can use either one. All right, let's move back to our PS Vita real quick. And we're going to go to our Vita shell. <clears throat> let's open that up. And you have two options. You can either go through USB connection or the FTP client. Uh, personally, I'm using the FTP client. That way I don't lose my stream here on the video and I don't have to reboot my system and save some time. So you can press start and go to USB or I'm sorry, the select button and you'll either enable USB mode or the FTP client. So I'll go FTP, hit the circle button, press select and now my server is running. I'll go back on my desktop and open up the FileZilla FTP client. This is what I'm currently using. And if you are using this, it's fairly simple. You just have to type in the host and the password. And you want to throw this into your UXO folder if you're using the FTP client. And I did create a VPK folder, and that's where I throw all of my uh, VPKs. So here is Diatalus x64. And you can just drag that into there. Perfect. And you're all set. Let's go back. And now, let's go back here. Go to your UXO folder. Find your VPK or wherever you placed it. Go to Dialys X64. Press X to install the package. And then after that, it's going to ask for permission. Press X again. And you're all set. And you should now see a bubble in your main menu right there. And right off the bat, we have a new wallpaper for Dialys X64. Nice. So if you have Vita Homebrew Browser, it's going to be fairly simple to update. All you have to do is select Dialys X64 and you want to download. So it's going to download the files, extract them, and you'll be all set. And this shouldn't affect any of the games that you already have installed. There we go. It's finishing installing. Perfect. It did take some time. So that one took about three, four minutes. All right, let's open up Diatlas and see what we got. So it says downloading compatibility list database. Okay, cool. 
Wow, look at that. Right off the bat, it read all of my games. You can see there we have Banjo-Kazooie. And we have info now at the bottom. <clears throat> so we have the game name, the version, the region, CRC, I'm not sure what that is. The SIG type, ROM size 16 megabytes, save type, and expansion pack unknown. And it says tags. Wow, so they added the... One thing I forgot to mention is the compatibility list that you can check out. I'll have this link in the description down below. And this just basically shows you all the games that people have been testing and seeing which ones work and which ones don't. And we have four different tags. We have Crash, In-Game Orange, In-Game Yellow, and Playable in Green. So uh, the Crash, obviously, it's not going to work games that crash before reaching the in-game. Then we have the in-game orange, games that go in-game but have major issues that prevent it from going further early on. And then yellow in-game, games that go far in-game but have glitches or have non-playable performance. And green playable, obviously games that can be played from start to finish with playable performance. Very good. So 35.37% so far. So that's a little over a third games that are playable here and you can check out the list and go through which ones uh, maybe one of your favorites is not going to work and just don't even waste your time trying it out uh, and if you are going to check out a game for example let's do busty move 2 arcade edition click in there and there's more information going on in here too which is nice and there's issues that has been detected like audio doesn't work async audio doesn't work runs at full speed with synchronous audio so they'll let you know what you can do to optimize the game better and change your settings and go from there so let's go back so this game has tags of playable and slow so we have a purple slow tag game is playable but still not full speed okay so we're probably gonna get the same experience as last time uh, Killer Instinct Gold, we have the orange in game. So it does go through the first stages of opening up the game, like the title, the start button, and then once you select a character, that's where it just fails completely. And then we have Pokemon Stadium in game yellow. Hmm. So games that go far in game but have glitched glitches or have non playable performances. Alright. So this region is Europe. Interesting. Pokemon Stadium version 1.1. ROM size 32 megabytes. This is so cool. Great improvement here. Uh, Super Smash Bros. We have playable. Only playable tag. That's great. 60 megabytes. And Ocarina of... T oh, I can finally use my D-pad. Yeah, I don't like using the analog. It's, it's kind of irritating. Uh... All right, in-game yellow, so glitches, and the game is slow, so I'm not even going to try that. Um, I, w I did say earlier I was going to test all five games, but now that these tags are here, I just want to save you guys the time and not go through that, obviously. So for the menu options at the top, you have to hover over, and you can't use the D-pad. Only up and down for the uh, ROM selection, so you'll use your left analog hover over and hit the left button and you'll be brought all the different options so we have our brightness we have our aspect ratio and we have emulation let's see here audio we can disable that there we go and you can select it by pressing the L button again as you can see Extra, let's see, UI theme. So we have dark, let's try light. Oh, nice. Let's do classic. Don't see anything classic about that. <laughs> uh, hide menu bar. Ooh, I don't want to do that. So anytime you're starting a game, you can just press X on it. For the most part, that's what works for me. So in order for you to access the menu bar, you have to tap on the touch screen and use your finger to hover over. And you can tap to select that. Tap again to hide that menu bar or the down uh, selection there. 
and you have the FPS going at the top. That's a really nice feature. That way, that bar doesn't stay up there all the time. And if you're curious as how fast is it going, there it is. Wow, that's pretty good. It's above uh, 45 frames. That's nice. Anything above 30 is just, you're winning, right? It's perfect. It's running so good. Look at that. Let's check out the main menu and see how far we can get. Yeah, they still have to fix that. It's terrible. Yeah, I'm just going to battle and see. There's a little glitch there. And I always have a hard time picking my Pokemon. And I'm just going to press yes because I can't see them. This is pointless. So we're at 45 frames right now in the battle stages. Wow, look how smooth that is. Look at that. Over 30. That's nice. And let's do battle. Let's go back. I don't know how to press. The controls are a little different here for me. Oh, I used cut. All right, that works. And that is it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I do apologize for not testing out the other games. I just thought it wasn't necessary uh, just because of the tags that they're already uh, having on those games. And there's just it's just pointless to go check them out if we're going to have the same results as last time. So uh, once I see a huge jump in performance, I will uh, do all the tests that I can and show you guys like I am with Pokemon Stadium. But this video is pretty long so I'm just gonna end it now and thank you so much for watching and as always you can always comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible thank you so much for subscribing if you haven't already please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video like this one let me know what you think about this new setup with the webcam going I just bought it so I'm having some issues because it's auto focusing kind of weird but whatever we're just gonna work with it thank you so much guys take care and I'll see you on the next one